It's your girl Nye here back with another video. Uh, today is going to be a little different. It's Disturbed Saturday. Um, I'm going to be different with the schedule because like, um, I work now. So I'm going to be going back and forth trying to see what, what works out best for me to upload for us. So yeah. So my apologies for being gone for the uh, last week or two. Um, I've been just getting started for my new job orientation and stuff. And... If you like today's makeup look, you could check out my Instagram and my TikTok at P underscore N-K-D-U-C-H-E-S-S. -S. And excuse the noise in the back, I'm currently washing clothes. So, yes, that um, Pink Duchess is my TikTok and Instagram um, handle. And um, everything will be linked down in the description box, so don't worry about that. I'm going to say thank you to my supporters who have been supporting me. I really appreciate it. This is really hard for me, but I'm finally getting comfortable with everything. So, yes. So, to stay updated to my channel, please subscribe to my channel, like this video, and comment down below. Everything will be in the... Um, description box like my social medias and thank you so let's get in today's video Cynthia Leeds was born on March 29, 1955 in Queens County, New York. Cynthia was 21 years old and 8 months pregnant when her and her husband Charles moved in together. Charles and Cynthia lived in an apartment in Kentwood Village Brick uh, Township Ocean County, New Jersey. Yes. On August 27, 1976, Charles and a friend entered th their home and they found Cynthia strangled and stabbed to death at about 5 p.m. Yes. Imagine coming home from work and you see your mates just stabbed up over there. Yeah. Cynthia was naked. She was stabbed in the chest with a large slash wound exposing the fetus. The murder weapon was washed off in the sink as the killer was washing their hands. Investigators assumed that maybe the killer was trying to take the fetus, but just changed their mind or they had over um, slashed so the fetus probably didn't survive. Yeah. It was no blood or any fingerprints because the uh, whoever did this, they just cleaned up the crime scene like they had enough time. Robbery was ruled out because Cynthia or Charles had money left on the counter and it wasn't ever touched. There wasn't any reason that Cynthia would have known who, the killer or had let her hit the person in to her home. It was stated that the killer must have entered through a window in their house. Like, it's so sad. The last time Charles saw Cynthia was earlier that morning before he left to go out for work. Mm -hmm. Charles was a truck driver. Charles stated that he woke up, went to the bathroom, made him some coffee, and left out to work after saying goodbye to Cynthia. Yeah, that is so sad. Like, oh my God, your last words is just... At least he got to say goodbye. At least he got to say that. She has stopped working... Cynthia has stopped working two weeks before this awful event. You know, she had to take time off because she was eight months pregnant. Every morning, Charles would take Cynthia to the train station at Manaswan. She would catch the 5.30 to 6 a.m. Um, train heading towards New York. This was their daily routine even after they moved from Manasquan to Brick Township. Cynthia's job was close to the train station. It was said that she had become acquainted with this man that shared the same route with her. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. I told y'all, don't be out here talking to these strangers. You cannot trust everybody. Investigators were in search of this strange man. Cynthia would meet up with this man on the third or fourth car of the train, and then they would walk together to the first car. <coughs> Excuse me. They would talk, laugh, and just appear to be close friends. Like, this is what witnesses is telling um police. Like, so what was the problem? Anyway, 
Both of them will get off at Newark Penn Station and will go their separate ways. He will go to get on the path trains that will take him to Manhattan. Mm hmm Cynthia, she must do so in that case, so is they saying Cynthia worked? And no, she must have went on another train to get to New York. Ugh, I'm so dumb. Cause I was about to say, oh, she worked in Newark. Anyway, investigators went to the train station and followed the same route, but that strange man, Cynthia's friend, he stopped riding the train right after her murder took place. This man has never been identified or questioned, even though investigators had multiple witnesses confirmed that he is definitely real. He was described to be a white man, no taller than 5'9", approximately in his early 20s. Cynthia and him never left or entered the train together from what was told to investigators. Mm -hmm. From what Cynthia told, he was in the, uh, told, like, I guess people should know that the strange man was in the banking business. He was due to be transferred all the way to um, Richmond, Virginia during this time. A little, mm, I put two and two together. Like, this was all supposed to be happening during it, this time of the murder. Police questioned literally everyone. I mean, going to door to door from the area of her home to the area of the train station. They even put up flat flyers and no one had any clues or leads. Please do not talk to strangers. Oh my God. Even it could be the people you know. Just don't talk to nobody. Just say hi. Hey, how you doing? Talk on the phone video chat. James A. Churchill was head of the major crime squad in the Ocean County Prosecutor's Office. He stated that the killer was suffering from monomania, a mental disorder in which the person is char characterized by irrational preoccupation. Excuse my baby in the back. This type of person is type of person is a loner who lives close to their victim and who's usually five years older or five years younger than their victim. He must have had a crush on her. And when he made his feelings known, she probably denied, you know, she probably denied that she is married and was pregnant. He's probably snapped and killed her. But it is stated that they only kill once because they believe the monomania is gone. But that doesn't make sense to me because wouldn't they crush again? I don't know. I got to look in that one. Eight years after Cynthia was brutally murdered, on July 1984, police finally had a lead, but unfortunately, it led nowhere. A tenant who also lived in Kentwood Village next to Cynthia and Charles stated that they saw a Hispanic male with a, a, in a white t-shirt run into the back of the apartment complex, but that wasn't the, the man wasn't identified either. December 8th, 2000, Trevor Dealey disappeared in Dublin. He was walking home from his office Christmas party this morning around 4 in the morning. He was seen on security cameras at his bank at the ATM. It was said that he needed office supplies for his shift the next day. On the security cameras, he starts heading home. But also, there's a man in dark clothing, like fully dressed in black who police believe played a huge role in Trevor's disappearance. Trevor was born on August 15, 1978. His parents are Michael and Ann Dealey. He grew up in Nas County, Kildare, Ireland. He was the youngest out of four children. Trevor went to college to study business at the Waterford Institute of Technology, but dropped out after two years. Soon after he completed a computer course in Dublin, in May of 1999, he started his job in the IT department of a bank in Ireland. Two weeks before his disappearance, late of November 2000, Trevor flew to Alaska. He went to visit a woman that he met in Dublin while she was on vacation. The Christmas party was supposed to be on December 7th, but after he and his co-workers had a few drinks at the um, Hilton Hotel and Copperface Jack, I'm guessing it's a pub, the party moved to Buck Whaley's nightclub. Trevor left around 3.25 a.m. His apartment was in the Renoir Complex in Ballsbridge. 
to answer everyone's question, there was a taxi strike. That's why he didn't call a cab. And it was a storm coming in with the winds around 60 to 70 miles per hour. So it would have been hard to get a taxi anyway. Ten minutes later, Trevor arrived at his office where he was greeted by security. Trevor had made himself a cup of tea and was catching up with his colleague, uh, Carl Pinder these names right carl was working the night shift trevor went to his desk made a few notes checked a couple of emails and he left around 403 a.m with the umbrella on his way walking out of the office he called up one of his friends and left a voicemail the voicemail stated and i quote hi glenn i missed you there just on my way home all is going good i'll talk to you tomorrow and i quote CCTV footage shows a man dressed in all black standing out uh, waiting in front of the bank. This was approximately half an hour, yeah, half an hour before Trevor arrived. The two of them had a brief conversation, and then two minutes later, two more men walked in the bank, but they was lo uh, later identified as uh, Trevor uh, colleagues. By the time everyone left the bank, the man in black was gone. 4.14 a.m., Trevor was seen walking past what was the AIB bank on the corner of Bagot Street Bridge and Haddington Road, still on his way home. So he passed another bank after he left the bank he was at. 30 seconds later, the man in black was seen passing that same bank, AIB. They never were able to identify who the man in black was. But Trevor's colleagues didn't worry about him not showing up because it was a late morning slash night. Like, you know, they was out having drinks, so they thought Trevor must just was going to call out. Trevor had roommates, but they was also gone that weekend, so they didn't know what was going on either. So it took for Trevor to not show up morning Monday... <sighs> That morning on Monday, for his supervisors and colleagues to worry and call authorities. Over those following days, Trevor's friends and family handed out over thousands of posters. They went house to house and business to business to see if anyone knew what had happened to Trevor. Investigators searched the Grand Canal and the Dodder River, but nothing was found. Investigators flew out to um, Alaska also to go talk to um, the woman that he was seeing. Also, his family also went out there on a separate time to go talk uh, to that lady too, but nothing had came from it. Trevor's disappearance is still a mystery to this day. His story was a sp um, aired as a special documentary on TV3 back in 2015. If you like today's story, please leave a like. Subscribe to my channel so you can stay updated with my videos and comment down below your opinions about these stories. Also, subscribe to my channel. Um, everything will be linked down in the description box so you can stay updated with me. All my social medias will be listed down below. Peace.